Hawk Cloud, yeah. Got it. All right. So, let's see. Are we live? Oh. Are we? Yeah. We are live. How's the audio? Laggy. Laggy? Oh, no. Are you sure it's laggy? Well, I mean... Yeah. Like, it, like how so it laggy? Fine. It sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I although I'm gonna introduce the show, <laughs> kind of without a uh, audience at the moment, I'm gonna still do it. So, Tech Tip Thursdays, we kind of gotten a request from a couple people to kind of like give more content that would help just normal layman people kind of figure out ways around their computer to kind of troubleshoot and fix them. So I decided um, instead of including it into Tech Talk Thursday or Tuesdays, whoops, did I say Tech Tip Tuesdays earlier? Matt? I don't know. Ah, uh, screw it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, essentially, we're going <laughs> to give that tip. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, Matt, uh, if it's at all possible, because I had to close the tab so we don't lag too much, or could you actually share that link on Facebook? Please and yeah, thank you. Um, but so far, um, as I was saying, we kind of wanted to uh, open up an outlet so that can make us allow us to like more focus on things that can possibly help you troubleshoot your computer or basically troubleshoot anything that can be troubleshoot using software and or hardware um so whether that be phones and uh among other things maybe someday i'll do like a a rooting tutorial or something but we'll figure it out from there either way let's uh Let's start off, like, right off the bat with something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's kind of like a security. And so on the show, we're going to go through, like, different gizmos and different software fixes that can help either A, troubleshoot your system, or B, um, make your system more secure, or C, actually, just make your experience with a computer easier in general. And I thought this little gizmo was super cool. So it's called the Gatekeeper, and the Gatekeeper um, is a little dongle that attaches via USB, and what it does is connects to a little keychain um, receiver via Bluetooth, and it kind of like, uh, what it'll do is when you walk away from your computer, you know, you, a lot of times, you know, you forget to sign out of your computer or something like that. Um, what this will do is either A, you can set it to sign out of your account, or B, lock your computer so that you it prompts you to put the password back in. So I think this is a really cool kind of way of securing your computer in an office environment or at home if you have kids that like to mess around with your computers and stuff like that. But the cool thing about it is, is that as long as it's on your keychain, for example, on your keys or on your person, and you come back to your computer, it'll automatically log you back in. But you can also set it to not do that. And I, I, I just think that's really cool. So when you have that in like conjunction with uh, various encryption methods, which we're going to talk about a little later into the show, um, and VPNs and other forms of uh, security, this could actually, like, that can make your system into a kind of a beefy and a little power station that not many people, it just adds an extra layer of protection to your system, essentially. So not as many people will be able to just jump in and get on it. And, of course, there are plenty of ways to kind of do a bootable uh, Linux 
uh, op OS and kind of bypass that. But either way, most people won't be able to do that, or at least won't think about it. So, Matt, you have a couple tips. What? <laughs> God damn it, Matt. <laughs> what? <laughs> But, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Mr. I swear I'm going to pay attention. I swear. <laughs> nah. I you, swear you... <laughs> is it. Nah, I'm never paying attention. Oh, man. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, so since you're doing the security side, yes. yeah. since you're doing software, security, stuff like that, I'm going to go with hardware, as always. Um, and as you can see, there's the iFixit Pro Toolkit. iFixit does a really good job of making online breakdown guides and help troubleshoot ideas with anything that you have. And they also put out these quality tool sets that are phenomenal for breaking down things. Like if you need a certain size screwdriver that you don't have or specialty screwdriver, say you're trying to bust open your Sega Game Gear, and you don't have that right, <laughs> that, that, that right bit. Well, you need a, uh, I think, what is it, a 3.8 or uh, whatever. It's a special one that you need to bust it open. But this one, the, what is this, the, uh, how many, well, I think this is, uh, 50, yeah, the 54-bit driver kit. I think this, this one's the top of the line one. Oh. Well, no, you have this one, and then you have the one that I have. Which one's the one that you have? Um, let me find it real quick. All uh, right. Because uh, it's the briefcase one, which I'm... Um, Trying to find, but it doesn't look like it's on Amazon. So, but while I'm finding this, it's uh, the very you, you pretty much have every essential tool that you'll need. Um, to break down anything if, say, your laptop, you need to actually get into your laptop and stuff like that. Um, you can do it with these. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm really... I think, I'm, I'm I, think sorry, you, I think you rocked it. <laughs> Hey, this is only episode um, one. <laughs> um, but I mean, you have all, but they they really are. Good yeah, these these things are fantastic. Um, aren't they magnetized as well? Uh, yes. All the oh man. Are magnetized. Oh baby. <laughs> so that way, say you're screwing around with little screws, they won't come undone when you're trying to screw them back in, so they won't uh, fall over and get everything and you can't find them well um, if only that's what she said now <laughs> she wouldn't be screwing things in now would she she could <laughs> oh well another tip that <laughs> yeah we're, we're, okay okay wait. <laughs> talk to us please <laughs> I want to get you in on this. No, that's not the. Oh. Either. I'm sorry, people. I'm going. I'm going on a rant now. Oh man. Uh, yeah. So let's let's go to. Oh, hey, I finally found it. <laughs> okay, you found it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Yeah, do I, you... I know if I go on a rant, uh, it's going over uh, curse right now. All right. Let's see the link. Oh, Think Geek. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I found it on ThinkGeek. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is actually what I have, and it literally comes in. Like you can see, it works. It opens up Xboxes, Playstations, 
Uh, Wheeze. Dreamcast. <laughs> Void the Wheeze. most warranties to win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Like, I mean, I also have... Where's that one thing that I was talking about? Um... So this can open Game Boys. I wonder if it can open Game Boy games. Yeah. So I can replace my uh, my battery for my Pokemon Silver game. Yeah, it has the tri-tips. Oh man, we're gonna have to get together. We gotta. This, we gotta. <laughs> this game bit. Yeah, the game bit 3.8 is what you need to open up the Sega Game Gear. So, yeah. That is Are you awesome. Finding that out with the... That yeah, is truly awesome. It's an amazing piece of thing. Piece of thing, and... indeed. <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, what, what else can I say about it? It's it's beautiful. It's come handy quite a quite a bit, yeah. Now it does come in with foam and the briefcase, which comes in handy and everything else. Now, will this fit into a book bag? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I'm, I needed to know, because I'm going to probably get one in the coming weeks, and I'm going to... Uh, you know me with my book bag. <laughs> my uh, portable tech let's station. Let's see. Hold on, let me pull it out real quick. It's actually probably a little longer and a little wider than my 15.6-inch uh, HP. Okay. But I mean, it this thing's bulky. So. How heavy is it, roughly? Oh, not that heavy. Uh, probably at most three to five pounds. That is awesome. Like I said, it, it's not really that heavy. Oh, three and a half pounds. There we go. <laughs> oh, perfect. So yeah, so. as long as you can carry on either a your arm, b your back, or c your mind, because you're obviously at that point have telekinesis. You know, you yeah. should be fine. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. nonetheless, moving on. Okay. Now, something yeah. I've always thought was uh, really cool was uh, boot sector kind of uh, virus move removal tools. And so, there are many on the market that uh, are free and that work perfectly fine. One of my favorites is Combo Fix. Now, it doesn't work for Windows 8 or 8.1 quite yet, but truthfully, if you want to get rid of any form of... Let's say you look at your aunt's computer and it has like 40 billion toolbars on it, and you want to get rid of them all in one fatal swoop because, you know, the antivirus doesn't actually check that out, Combo Fix will do it for you. Combo fix is awesome. It's uh, almost the end all, you know, antivirus that I like to use when I'm troubleshooting computers that are not running eight and or soon to be coming ten. <laughs> I've, I've actually had to troubleshoot some computers that were running the technical uh, preview of Windows 10 before, and that was an interesting thing. But another boot sector uh, software out there is through Avast, and a lot, like a lot of antiviruses, don't include this in their things. But Avast actually includes a boot sector antivirus that all you have to, as the only thing is, is that it's harder to install or run if you're already on an infected machine. But if you already have it on the machine, and the computer is really badly. Uh, infected with various viruses, this will typically get rid of them all. They, of course, they both run very slow. <laughs> it requires a ton of processing power, and of course, depending on what processor you have, it's going to bottleneck at some point, some way, some shape or form. So, so can, I, can I just insert something here? No, go for it, man. Okay. If you don't have this on your computer already you're basically screwed so what you're saying is get c cleaner no 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 don't no. have 
Sea Cleaner actually is pretty good as well. I actually don't personally use it because Sea Cleaner is more of a thing to maintain things. That's how I see Sea well, Cleaner. I mean, I've, I've cleaned up my laptop with it. Yeah. And, well, and that thing works wonders now. It speeded up. I mean, my, my laptop, when it was my daily driver, it used to have a boot time of probably five minutes. Ooh. And then some. Yeah, it was nasty. Now, well, it's down to like a minute, minute 30 tops. Nice. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, C Cleaner works great. Um, it's a thing, wonderful thing. If you don't have Combo Fix already installed. Well, you actually Combo Fix, you don't have to install it at all. That's the wonder of Combo Fix. It kind of just runs. Well, the the yeah, thing about Combo mean, Fix, you have install. to... Oh, no, no, no. That's for a vast. That's for the other kind of uh, other boot sector things. But Combo Fix, actually, you oh, have okay. to uninstall all the antiviruses for it to even work. Because it works as a virus. No, yeah, for Combo Fix, yes. No, uh-huh. No. It... No. Don't... I have Trend Micro. Uh, I'm doing this. I have Trend Micro on my HP, that la same laptop, and it worked just fine. Combo Fix or CC Cleaner? CC Cleaner. Oh, okay, yeah, we're not talking about CC Cleaner at the moment. We're talking about Combo Fix. Oh, combo I Fix. talking about C Cleaner. Yeah, C Cleaner. C Cleaner, no, you don't. No. But what C Cleaner does is actually goes into the... Uh, the startup and does a defrag and everything like that and it's startup management and hopefully someday in the future people will become more familiar with that and learn how to manage that better on their own but of course then we would be out of a job <laughs> when it comes to the uh, yeah. freelance market of fixing computers now uh, CC Cleaner, all of that can be done manually um, as well. I, I've had to do that before, especially on Windows 8 computers, um, is go through and do this all manually. Now, CC Cleaner since then, that was when Windows 8 first came out and nothing supported it. <laughs> so, Combo yeah. Fix, wonderful. CC Cleaner, wonderful. Um... I guess in future episodes, we'll talk about how to better uh, optimize your system for boot, for starting up and stuff like that. And we'll talk, yeah. yeah, and that'll be another episode another day, probably next week. Who knows what we're going to talk about next week. <laughs> so, <laughs> one thing we're going to talk about is something near and dear to both of our hearts, <laughs> is magnetic organization tools for when you're disassembling computers. Because, yeah. if, oh man, this is this is a true, oh, truly man. raw subject for me, because I have lost so many screws <laughs> before, looking for <laughs> screws that I've dropped or I accidentally tip over the the bowl that I was using or something like that. So now they make magnetic trays, utilizing um. Those uh, magnets. those magnets that are strong enough to be able to, yeah, I know it's like, whoops. <laughs> actually, the particular one I'm showing right now, uh, it's actually strong enough to like stick to a wall, and hold sideways. And you can actually, if you drop a screw, you can use it to like find it. <laughs> so that's a cool yeah. thing about Same thing these. With the one. Um, these things are actually really cool. Uh, I'm actually using mine right now, and I have like 30 screws in it, <laughs> and it just, yeah, I know, and I mean, I'm holding it upside down right now, and it's not moving, I mean, you can literally, I'm shaking it as hard as I can, and I've got tiny screws in there too, you know, the little ones that you lose all the time, I'm yeah. just shaking it. <laughs> and they're not moving that I is mean, intense I'm, it's really a strong magnet now this um 
I'm watching the Twitch stream, so this is the one of them, one of the magnetic tray. But the other one, the iFixit Pro magnet. Uh, uh, Project Matt. Yes, that is pretty cool. Yes. It is a essentially a magnetic whiteboard, which all whiteboards are, but you can write where screws go and place them right there. You have so, a dedicated area. Yeah. So kind of imagine like like uh when you're disassembling something, for example, um, I disassemble a lot of like PS3s and game consoles, and I kind of have to like remember what section of the system these screws go. And some of these screws actually look very similar. They might be different by millimeters. So basically, being able to sector off a magnetic mat to show where everything is is almost a godsend. And then to be able to show, and you don't lose anything. yeah, because what I used to do back in the day is uh, record myself disassembling it, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then watch the video of myself disassembling it in reverse. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I used to do before I realized, oh, I better fix this. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, like having a magnetic cup full of just mixed screws doesn't always help you in the sense of reassembling things. So this, I think, is an awesome product for that. Now, yes, let's move on to something that's near and dear once again to my heart. That actually is what I touched on earlier is encryption. So now, encryption on systems is a great thing. BitLocker comes with uh, Microsoft and Apple has their own encryption um, solution. I don't know about the various uh, releases of Linux on how they deal with encryption. I believe Ubuntu has a, a solution for that. But of course Linux, you can, you can encrypt all the different layers as opposed to just encrypting the whole file system outright. So. <laughs> But that's that's completely a different conversation for a different day. That'd probably be more appropriate for tech talk. But either way, like working in conjunction with like various little tools and gadgets and gizmos to be able to lock your computer when you're not around and stuff like that, being able to encrypt your system for the most part, the encryptions that are included with um, Microsoft and Apple, they might not be the world's strongest encryptions, but they are sufficient enough for um, possible hackers. And if you do a lot of like uh, sensitive you know, work, like stuff that have to do with your job, um, I have a friend that he has to remote into his job at home every once in a while. And of course, that kind of, having a local system encrypted to be able to protect that end-to-end connection is always a good thing because if he had viruses or spyware on a system potentially um, stuff that he's working on for his job can be stolen and then repurposed or sold somewhere else or and of course that comes back on you and that that can negatively affect if you affect you significantly so I honestly push encryption on your phone, my personal pet peeve on your computers and everything like that. Um, actually, a lot of phones nowadays come encrypted by default with an end-to-end -end encryption, which is fantastic because uh, having encryption on local, on your local system to be able to break things, break into things, as long as you don't have any way to bypass it, for example, you have on Lollipop your Bluetooth trusted so that it gets rid of the unlock screen right off the bat. Nobody's going to really get into that. And you can kind of take from that and apply it to whatever you would need. So, either way, 
we are nearly we're coming up to the 30 minute mark we've planned on doing this show for only a 30 minute cap because it's kind of a tech tip just bam 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 rapid fire we don't want to go too... It's also the first episode. Yeah, it's also the first episode. We kind of have Tech Talk to be more of the uh, podcast-like show. And this one, we kind of want to like give you the information and scurry back onto our little holes in the ground. <laughs> so, uh, any, any final thoughts and any final comments, Matt? On where you see... Actually, yes. I okay. Do- Go for it. I, I, I just want to highlight a, a uh, product. Oh, go for it, man. Uh, I'm sending you the link. All right. Because I think these things are neat. And if well, everybody has that five and a quarter drive bay that everybody's not using. Um, oh, yeah. These things. Yeah. I picked one up recently. And these things are actually pretty amazing if you need more storage or in or around your computer. Uh, they go into an unused five and a quarter drive bay. It converts that to a tiny drawer, as you can clearly see. Um, all you do to open it is push in, basically push it, and it pops open. It does have a little shelf or a little place stuff and then ha- has um, storage space, of course. Uh, so if you have like a surplus supply of USB drives that you don't really use or like me need often, yes, <laughs> so you can pop them. <laughs> we'll talk about you later, uh... Uh, but you can pop them in and they're out of your way. Um, of course. The only downside is if you ever need that drawer or a five and a quarter drive bay, you'll have to remove it. But I mean, honestly, I most people, five, five and a quarter. yeah, most people won't be using more than four hard drives, anyways. And so, and then it's like, yeah, and considering, this yeah. Because Everybody could need more storage. I mean, come on. Or a wonderful, a wonderful little weed, <laughs> a place to store your that weed. <laughs> I mean, oh. Yeah, you. If you just look at my computer, you wouldn't even realize that I have a drawer in inside. My yeah. Hell, you wouldn't even realize I have top storage on my computer. So, I mean. It's really personal taste for this, but I wanted to highlight this. Actually, I think it's a really cool idea, especially since CD bay, CD drive bays are being phased out slowly. Um, so, I mean, like, yeah, like I don't even have a CD drive option on my computer. So, yeah, it's kind of it's it's a good thing to be able to repurpose your stuff to to kind of be able to not have just an empty new CDs, Matt. Rarely. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a limb and say rarely. Well, for my computer, I use them rarely. I mean, I do want exactly. to upgrade my CD drive to a Blu-ray drive. So, I mean, I could watch... So, if my TV ever goes out again, I can just watch Blu-rays on here. Yeah. So, now, we're going we're gonna to actually uh, talk about that Blu-ray drive thing another day. Because I have a couple things to say about it. A couple good tips about Blu-rays. Um, but we're going to end the show right here. Um, yes, let's end it. Yes. So, either way, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. I didn't really watch the <laughs> the chat today at all. Because my phone didn't want to s- oh, yeah. s- stop sleeping. So, let me just actually th- go up on the chat very quick. Um, I mean, it's... But, okay. So. There we go. And, oh well. Either way, have a good night, everyone. Or good day, depending on what part of the world you are in. And, Matt? Uh, It's been a blast. 
hopefully you learned something and maybe you can and last but not least see you guys next tuesday uh, of course yeah. that and see you guys next tuesday um we're going to be doing tech talk to tuesday next tuesday and of course it starts around nine o'clock just like this show is going to start around nine o'clock every night so all the shows start around nine o'clock um game day wednesday doesn't really start at nine o'clock but let's end the show <laughs> all right later everyone all right.